Tim Tebow talks Mets journey 0 hours 1 minute and 36 seconds New York Mets prospect Tim Tebow speaks about his goals for this season heading into camp and his journey within the Mets organization. Mets prospect Tim Tebow is always a hot commodity in Port St. Lucy. But, while the past two seasons he didn't have a shot at breaking camp with the Mets, things feel different now for the 31-year-old, Mets GM Brody Van Wagenen said earlier this offseason that Tebow has a shot at making the majors this season, making this spring training critical for him. Tebow will likely start this season in AAA Syracuse Van Wagenen pointed out, but this will be the first step to proving he is worth a call-up this season. Use this spring training as a time really get a lot better and improve and making strides because this will be sort of the biggest spring training for me, Tebow said. Before, I didn't know what I was doing, it was my first time. Then last year, I didn't play one snap of one snap, one pitch of outfield. I'd only took a few at-bats and most of those I probably took steps back because I was trying to do it with bad form and pain. Video, first look at Tim Tebow at Mets camp looks like Tebow hasn't fully transitioned from his broadcasting role with ESPN for college football this past season, but spring training is there to work out the kinks back to baseball, though, Tebow noted last year being the season where he got a true feel at the plate and it showed when he hit .273 with 6 homers and 46 RBI in AA before suffering a hamate injury in his right hand that required surgery to repair. He's looking to replicate that feeling this spring and throughout the season. You still have to get that feel, that rhythm and the timing and that was something I felt like I got a lot at the end of last year, Tebow said. And then when I had that it was so much easier to make the adjustments off of it. Those were two areas I felt a lot more comfortable. If Tebow does get the call to wear the blue and orange in flushing, does that mean his journey from ex-NFL quarterback to MLB player is complete? Not quite, this journey isn't defined by just getting there, Tebow explained. Shoot, I've already enjoyed it enough to say it's worth it, the whole process. Would that be awesome? Of course it would. It's such an amazing thing and it would be so enjoyable. But, at the same time, regardless of what happens I know I'll enjoy it every day and I think that's the biggest thing for me, related, Tim Tebow was offered chance to return to football greater than greater than Reed Morse Aroni, Van Wagen and hints Tim Tebow could reach majors this season greater than greater than Reed. More watch, if Tim Tebow hits the majors, what does that say about the Mets season? Greater than greater than read more Tim Tebow spoke to Kyler Murray 0 hours 0 minutes and 48 seconds New York Mets prospect Tim Tebow has proven he's a two-sport athlete and had some sound advice for NFL prospect Kyler Murray. Before Kyler Murray decided he would pursue a career in the NFL as a quarterback over his baseball career with the Oakland A's, he sought advice from another fellow Heisman Trophy winner, Tim Tebow, while the 31-year-old Mets prospect did not have to make a decision between football and baseball. Out of college like Murray, he understands how difficult a decision this is for the 21-year-old but had a simple message for him, follow your heart, Peter Alonso talks making roster 0 hours 1 minute and 19 seconds New York Mets prospect Peter Alonso has a lot of hype to be the Mets' next first baseman. How does he feel entering camp this spring? At this time last year, Mets' top prospect Peter Alonso wasn't prepared to compete for a job in Port St. Lucie. But that certainly isn't the case following a season where he tiered through the minors, there is a good chance the Mets break camp with Alonzo as their starting first baseman on opening day. And that is the obvious goal for the 24-year-old slugger, who admitted this year has a different feel in spring training. It's definitely a different feel from last year because last year I was a non-roster invitee, same as this year but I'd only had couple weeks of experience in AA, Alonzo told the media on Saturday got up to AAA last year and I kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. So I'm just going to work hard and see what happens, as he left his position as prominent agent and head of baseball at CA, Brody Van Wagen and entered his new job as general manager of the Mets surrounded by countless questions. 
However, while some people continue to wonder about his preparedness and potential conflicts of interest, one thing is clear, he isn't short on confidence, I think 84 wins is light, Van Wagenen told WFAN's Mike Francesca on Monday. If we do the things we're capable of, we're going to win. We're not afraid of the competition outside of the division, and we're certainly not afraid of the teams inside the division. We will and should be a playoff team. The confidence emitting from Van Wagenen isn't just limited to fans, players and media, but is also being noticed by rival executives, SEP. 26, 2018, New York City, New York, USA, New York Mets starting pitcher Jacob Degram, 48, reacts after the top of the eighth inning against the Atlanta Braves at City Field. Mandatory credit, Brad Penner USA Today Sports Brad Penner, John Harper, SNY.TV, Twitter, everyone seems shocked that Jacob Degram left the door open to the notion he'd consider limiting his innings in 2019 if he doesn't the contract extension he wants. But, sorry, I can't buy into the outrage. This isn't Matt Harvey, suddenly springing the idea of shutting himself down in the heat of a September pennant race. New York Mets' Noah Syndergaard, 34, delivers a pitch during the first inning of a baseball game Monday, August 6, 2018, in New York. P photo, Frank Franklin 2, AP, Anthony McCarron, SNY.TV, Twitter, Luis Severino got paid life-changing money and didn't have to endure the potential hurt feelings that the nitpicking of an arbitration hearing can sometimes make bloom. The Yankees grabbed cost certainty on an ace-level arm, and the rest of us scored some juicy topics to kick around when the Yanks and Severino came to an agreement Friday on a contract extension for the righty. Especially this, this Severino's deal, signal that the Yanks are ready to talk pre-free agency deals with the rest of their young studs. In other words, on deck, Aaron Judge, Cespedes gives an injury update 0 hours 0 minutes and 54 seconds Cespedes was honest about his recovery admitting he's around 50% and doesn't know exactly when he'll be back. After all the moves made this offseason, the Mets are positioned to be much better than their 77-85 record last season. And that's why of Yoini's Cespedes can't help being frustrated, Cespedes has been in Port St. Lucie, but he hasn't been on the same workout plan as the rest of his teammates. The veteran continues his rehab regimen following double heel surgery, and the Mets are being very cautious with his progress as they don't want to rush him back, we want to make sure that he's 100% healthy when he comes back, Mets GM Brody Van Wagenen said last week, whenever that day is, September 26, 2018, New York City, New York, USA, New York Mets starting pitcher Jacob Degram, 48, reacts after the top of the eighth inning against the Atlanta Braves at City Field. Mandatory credit, Brad Penner USA Today Sports Brad Penner, with spring training upon us, MLB Network released its top 20 players right now, and a certain Mets starter made the list, the reigning National League Cy Young Award winner Jacob Degram comes in at no. 10 on the list. He is the first pitcher named on the list, making him the best pitcher in baseball among the panel's eyes. And that isn't hard to debate, given his insanely dominant season last year. Degram produced one of the best single seasons in baseball, pitching to the tune of a 1.70 air at 1.99 FIP with 269 strikeouts and a 0.91 whip over 217 innings, 32 starts. The Mets offense didn't help him much, as he owned a 10-9 record at the end of the year. Mets highlights from day 3 0 hours 1 minute and 59 seconds day 3 in sunny Port St. Lucy and the squad is in full swing at spring training. It was another beautiful day down in Port St. Lucy, as the Mets pitchers and catchers got another session in at the team's facility, pitchers hit the mound for a quick bullpen session, as Steven Metz, Juris Familia, and Seth Lugo were among those working on their arsenal. Oh, and doesn't Edwin Diaz look good in his new blue and orange threads? The Mets' first full team workout will take place on Monday. New York City, New York, USA, general view of City Field between the New York Mets and the Philadelphia Phillies.
Mandatory credit, Brad Penner USA Today Sports Brad Penner, the top prospect sites all released their top 10 to 30 players for every organization at the start of each season. However, by midsummer, those lists end up being shaken around by guys getting traded, falling from grace, getting injured or, hopefully, improving and shooting up the ranks. Here are five Mets prospects I believe have the potential to move up a few slots this season, be it into the organization's elite list or, in the case of one player, MLB's top 50. De Williams and Nelson Figueroa discuss the news coming from Jacob Degram and Brody Van Wagenen's press conferences, should the Mets feel pressure to sign Degram or should they wait? Click below to listen with the new baseball season upon us, the Athletics Jason Stark released his annual spring training preview to catch a glimpse at what some in the game think. Happened this offseason, the extensive report saw Stark poll 30 esteemed baseball managers, coaches, scouts and executives, to see what they believed about how the league shapes out this season, based on certain questions. One of those questions asked who the most improved team was in the National League, and the Mets came out on top with 24 votes. Next, was an NL East rival in the Phillies with 22 votes, with the Reds 20, Nationals 10, and Cardinals 10, rounding out the top 5. Callaway clarifies McNeil's role 0 hours 2 minutes and 6 seconds Mickey Callaway clarified what the Mets see as Jeff McNeil's role for the 2019 season. We know Jeff McNeil's role with the Mets in 2019 will be primarily as an outfielder. We know his former college coach thinks he can handle it. We know McNeil thinks he can handle it. And now we know another player it will impact. Mets manager Mickey Calloway said Thursday that McNeil will probably be in left field most of the time, with the team wanting him to get comfortable with all those angles, and when asked if McNeil would play every day against right-handed starting pitchers and whether that means Brandon Nimmo in center field and Michael Conforto in right field on the days McNeil starts, Calloway answered in the affirmative. Degram, Van Wagen and on extension 0 hours 2 minutes and 40 seconds to Graham's answer on maybe limiting innings or pitches headlines the latest on a potential extension deal being reached in spring training. Minutes after Jacob Degram told reporters that he would like the feeling to be mutual from the Mets regarding an extension and wouldn't rule out limiting his innings if he didn't get one, GM Brody Van Wagenen sat behind the same microphone for his first presser of spring training, yes, Jacob is 100% a part of our future now and hopefully for years to come, Van Wagenen said at the start of his roughly 20-minute session, with all but one question about Degram, Van Wagenen was expansive while discussing the Degram situation, and gave a forthcoming response when asked how much of a priority it is to get a deal done with Degram before the March 28th deadline the Degram camp has set, reacting to Degram's comments 0 hours 1 minute and 7 seconds New York Mets pitcher Jacob Degram proved he is an elite pitcher but with a contract extension up in the air, will he limit his innings? Jacob Degram said Thursday that he won't call himself frustrated, but the Mets ace seems perturbed at the lack of movement when it comes to a potential contract extension and he isn't ruling out placing innings restrictions on himself this season if a deal isn't struck. The line of communication is still open, Begram said Thursday in Port St. Lucy. We have not received an offer. I really enjoy playing here and would like to be here, but that's kind of up to them, the kind of up to them line from Degram was a telling one, as he reiterated multiple times what he also said multiple times last season, he wants to be here, but the Mets have not yet made an official offer to keep him in New York beyond 2020. Bobby V's words to Todd Zale 0 hours 0 minutes and 33 seconds ever thought about an ex-player on Valentine's Day? Former Mets manager Bobby Valentine has kind words for former Mets player Todd Zale. After sending out his own letter to his ex-player, former Mets manager Bobby Valentine has everything you need for the perfect Valentine's Day with your loved one. Do you need some advice to make your Valentine's Day go smoothly? Valentine has a few pointers. Click below to see the video New York Mets starting pitcher Jacob Degram pitches against the Philadelphia Phillies in the first inning at Citi Field. Noah K. Murray, USA Today Sports, it's official, Jacob Degram will be the Mets opening day starter in 2019.
Mets manager Mickey Calloway said Degram, the reigning National League Cy Young Award winner, will get the nod when New York opens the season on the road against Max Scherzer and the Washington Nationals on March 28. Degram, Sindergaard take field 0 hours 1 minute and 5 seconds It's the second official day of spring training and Noah Sindergaard and Jacob Degram are ready to go in Port St. Lucie. It's the second official day of spring training down in Port St. Lucy and pitchers and catchers were all working hard in preparation for the team's first full workout on Feb. 18. Jacob Degram and Noah Syndergaard, of course, were among the pitchers getting their work in on day two. A general view from the press box of First Data Field, home of the Saint. Lucy Mets, Jason Vinlove, USA Today, the Mets are on the verge of blowing up their stadium renovation deal, with St. Lucy and looking for a new spring training home, reports Keona Gardner of the TC Palm. According to Gardner, the potential of the Mets looking for a new spring training home comes amid the ongoing renovation plans for First Data Field, something Gardner reports has gotten contentious with St. Lucy County blowing through their original budget and demanding more money from the Mets. Gardner notes that the Mets have already given an extra $2 million toward the renovation costs, but have so far balked at a request for more. New York Mets pitcher Jacob Degram sits in the dugout prior to the game against the Philadelphia Phillies at Citizens Bank Park. Gregory Fisher, USA Today Sports, April 7 as Jacob Degram's Cy Young bobblehead day at City Field. Will his award be repaired by then? The Graham Cy Young Award was chipped in transit and will be sent back to the manufacturer for repair, according to the New York Post's Mike Puma. First look at Harvey on Angels 0 hours 0 minutes and 37 seconds Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim pitcher Matt Harvey dons his new threads and talks about being with his new team. The Matt Harvey era in New York ended last year when the Mets traded the former ace to the Reds, and the right-hander is now attempting to revive his once-promising career with the Angels. But after all of the off-field issues, the surgery to fix his thoracic outlet syndrome and his inability to regain his all-star form in flushing leaves lingering regret within Harvey. June 8, 2018, Arlington, Texas, USA, Texas Rangers starting pitcher Doug Fister, 38, pitches against the Houston Astros during the game at Globe Life Park in Arlington. Mandatory credit, Jerome Myron, USA Today Sports, Jerome Myron, despite making multiple moves to improve their roster this season, the Mets were still in the market for starting pitching depth, according to SNY's Andy Martino. There are numerous starters still waiting to sign with a new team for the season. But one came off the market on Wednesday, and not because he inked a new deal. Veteran RHP Doug Fister will retire from the MLB after 10 big league seasons, his agent Paige Odell told MLB.com, as John Morosi, Fister was on the Mets' radar along with several other starters, including Gio Gonzalez and Brett Anderson, what will Cespedes do in 2019? 0 hours 0 minutes and 41 seconds Anthony DeComo takes a look at what type of role Giannis Cespedes will have for the Mets in 2019. Will he be healthy? The only certainty regarding Giannis Cespedes for the 2019 Mets is that he won't be on the field at the start of the season as he continues to recover from surgery on both of his heels. As Cespedes enters spring training, Anthony Dicamo explores the major questions surrounding the slugger as it pertains to 2019, Gary A. Vasquez, Mets GM Brody Van Wagenen has boldly said, come get us, about the team's competitors in the NL East this season. And when it comes to the Mets' odds to win the World Series, they're on pretty equal footing. The Mets, Nationals, and Braves all have 16 over 1 odds to win the World Series, while the Phillies, strangely, have 10 over 1 odds, according to Bet Online. Bet Online must be gambling that the Phillies land one of the mega star free agents still on the market, Bryce Harper or Manny Machado. But landing one of those players might not even vault the Phillies to the top of the division. Best of Mickey Calloway 0 hours 2 minutes and 44 seconds For the first time this spring, Mickey Calloway officially talked to the press. He discussed lessons learned, Cespedes and Degram's status. 
Mets manager Mickey Callaway spoke with reporters Wednesday afternoon for the first time since a evening at spring training. Here are the takeaways. Lessons he learned in 2018 Diaz is happy to be Mets closer 0 hours 2 minutes and 35 seconds Edwin Diaz spoke for the first time in Port St. Lucie. He is ready to embrace the high-pressure stage that being a closer in NY brings. Mets closer Edwin Diaz, who was acquired from the Mariners along with Robinson Cano earlier this offseason, doesn't think closing in New York will be different from Seattle. I don't think so, Diaz said Wednesday after reporting to spring training in Port St. Lucie. Same game, same place, same field. Nothing changed, on his mindset going into games, Diaz said he's ready to pitch more than one inning if necessary. The Mets have four players on the new Fangraphs Top 100 Prospects list, with one B. Peter Alonso, no. 48, INF Andres Jimenez, no. 52, SS Ronnie Mauricio, no. 68, and 3 B. Mark Vientos, number 92, making the cut. New York had two players on new baseball prospectus top 101 prospects list, and the same players were their only two representatives on MLB Pipeline's new top 100 prospects list. Meanwhile, Keith Law of ESPN, who had Vientos ranked as his best Mets prospect, ranked the Mets farm system no. 14 in baseball, on the new Fangraphs list, compiled by Eric Longenhagen and Kylie McDaniel, there was an eye-popping player comparison made regarding the 17-year-old Mauricio, with Fangraphs writing that, this is what Fernando Tatis Jr. looked like at age 17, May 8, 2018, Cincinnati, Ohio, USA, New York Mets manager Mickey Calloway, 36, against the Cincinnati Reds at Great American Ballpark. Mandatory credit, Aaron Doster USA Today Sports, Aaron Doster, New York Mets manager Mickey Calloway speaks during a news conference ahead of the official start of spring training baseball practice Tuesday, February 13, 2018, in Port St. Lucie, Florida. AP Photo, Jeff Roberson, Jeff Roberson, AP, Mets manager Mickey Calloway had his ups and downs in his first year as the team's skipper in 2018. After an 11-2-1 start to the season, the Amazons looked destined for the postseason. But a horrendous June month washed away that hope, even after the team put together a strong finish to the season. Since then, the Mets have entered a win-now mode, spearheaded by its new GM in Brody Van Wagenen. The former agent has brought in the necessary pieces to see the Mets compete for a division title in what is expected to be a tough NL East. And they still tout arguably the best starting rotation in the game. With Van Wagenen already stirring the pot this offseason by saying, come get us, to the Mets' rivals, Callaway has some lofty expectations on his shoulder to produce a postseason quality club. So, with that in mind, here are some questions he should be facing from the media in his first presser down in Port St. Lucie. John Harper, SNY.TV, Twitter, you could see this coming from the day Brody Van Wagenen crossed over from agent to GM, and now he's in a stare down with Jacob Degram that is not only pivotal for the organization, but perhaps his own credibility with his players. Van Wagenen, after all, wants to be a good guy boss, having spent years as an agent cultivating relationships with players. Two of his big moves this offseason were acquiring former clients, Robinson Cano and Jed Lowry, and he made both at least partly out of a strong belief in what he came to know about them as people as well as players. Furthermore, BVW has spent the offseason declaring his faith in the 2019 Mets, talking them up as favorites with a bravado that has been well received by the players. Danny Abriano, SNY.TV, Twitter, Mets GM Brody Van Wagenen said Tuesday that Jacob Degram setting an opening day deadline on contract extension talks was a mutual understanding, suggesting it shouldn't be viewed as a negative. However, this situation certainly can't be viewed as a positive, not on the heels of Degram being disappointed last week with how the negotiations were going. So now the Mets are in a precarious spot, under pressure to get something done with Degram. 
and if they don't, there's a chance their dream rotation, the area they've built their entire team around in an effort to contend now, will fall apart sooner rather than later. Wilson Ramos ready for 2019 0 hours 2 minutes and 11 seconds Wilson Ramos is healthy for spring training for the first time in a while. Looks forward to learning about his new teammates on the Mets. One of the Mets' biggest needs this offseason was improving the catcher position. They not only wanted a solid defensive player, but one that also made an impact in the batter's box. Mets GM Brody Van Wagenen ended up signing veteran C. Wilson Ramos, calling him the perfect fit for us back in December. Ramos has the power bat, strong arm, and defensive prowess at the dish that makes him the everyday catcher heading into Port Saint. Lucy on Tuesday, as pitchers and catchers officially reported to camp, Ramos said he is 100% coming into camp and has been working hard this offseason to last a full season, the same goal he had when he signed with the Mets back in December. Van Wagenen talks Degram 0 hours 2 minutes and 32 seconds Brody Van Wagenen held an impromptu media scrum to discuss the status of Jacob de Grom's possible contract extension. Mets GM Brody Van Wagenen weighed in Tuesday on Jacob Degram setting an opening day deadline on contract extension talks, saying that the team in Degram's camp came to a mutual understanding about the negotiation. The last thing either side wants to do is have it be a distraction once the season starts, Van Wagenen said from Port Saint. Lucy during a scrum with reporters at spring training, I think it's for everyone's best interest so that the focus when the season starts is on the performance of the team, Van Wagenen added. The Valentine's Day dating game 0 hours 0 minutes and 47 seconds it's almost Valentine's Day, so what better time to play the SNY baseball dating game with former New York Mets manager, Bobby Valentine. Valentine's Day is right around the corner. So SNY decided to play the baseball dating game with none other than former Mets manager Bobby Valentine. With three random players up on the board, Valentine had to choose one to start his team around. Does he go for player 1, 2, or 3? Degram dominates report day 0 hours 1 minute and 14 seconds. Degram announced he won't negotiate a long-term deal once the season starts. Anthony DeComo tells us his take on the situation. Brody Van Wagenen reiterated on Tuesday that the Mets want to keep Jacob Degram for the long term. Now, there's a deadline. Degram, who is under team control for two more seasons, has set an opening day deadline to get a potential extension done, SNY's Andy Martino confirmed. The Mets open the season, March 28 against the Nationals. Mets brass met with DeGram's representatives from CAA at the winter meetings this past December in Las Vegas, minus Van Wagenen, who was recused because he used to be DeGram's agent, and left with the expectation that a long-term offer was coming. The offer still hasn't come. Mets are busy in Port St. Lucie 0 hours 0 minutes and 38 seconds. The number of Mets players in Florida is growing by the minute. The squad is getting ready for the official start of spring training. Pitchers and catchers officially reported to camp on Tuesday, which means it's the official start to the 2019 season. But many position players have made their way to Port St. Lucie to get early reps in preparation for the first team workout on Feb. 18, the Mets come into camp with fresh faces all around, Robinson Cano, Wilson Ramos, Jed Lowry, and Edwin Diaz to name a few. And they were all brought in by the team's new GM Brody Van Wagenen, who has already been boisterous about the team's postseason.